Hi folks, how do you cut a large chamfer with a small tool? It actually came up over on the NYC CNC forums and it's something that we do a ton because we do it on every one of our Modvice steel jaws and aluminum soft jaws. And we do this using the bore toolpath in Fusion 360. That lets us take a relatively small tool in this case, a 3 8 inch diameter chamfer mill, and we can interpolate or surface, in this case, 1.75 inch diameter chamfer. So let's dive into the tips and tricks that we've learned on this process. First off, don't do this if you don't have to. If you have a large enough chamfer tool where the flute can machine the whole chamfer in one pass, you're going to get a better surface finish and it's going to be quicker. But that's not always the case. Carbide tends to get really expensive as you get larger diameters. And in some cases, they're just not going to be a tool that can cut it in one pass. You can also surface it in with a bull nose or a ball nose end mill. And in fact, that's part of our roughing process for this workflow. It actually works really well. It just takes a really long time, especially when you want to minimize any scalloping or apparent tool marks. And we'll go into a little bit more detail of this example. We're at eight seconds using the chamfer tool with the bore tool path and somewhere between a minute and 30 in over four minutes. The difference between these two is how many step downs, which again directly relates to the resulting surface finish. To do this, we are using a 3 8 inch, 82 degree helical chamfer tool from Lakeshore Carbide. They make the exact same style end mill in 60 and 90 as well. We find that these leave an excellent surface finish, whether it's chamfering or edge breaking or deburring, anything like that, we love these. This whole process will also work with the typical standard mill drill. After we face the part and drill out our initial holes, we will rough out the holes and we'll use a three flute radius end mill. This one has a 15 valve corner radius from helical. And that radius helps minimize the stair steps left as we're roughing out this part. And that gives us more even tool pressure, which is one of the key parts to getting a really good surface finish when we come in with our chamfer tool to do the final pass. To bore the chamfer, 2D bore, we will pick Tool 51, which is the 3 8 inch chamfer tool, and then simply pick the chamfer itself. The pitch is up to you. A larger number will decrease the number of passes and decrease the cycle time. However, if there's any misalignment in the angle of the tool, consider a smaller pitch value, which helps blend in the tool marks on the tool path. If you've got things really dialed in, in theory, you could use a pitch angle uh, as large as the flute length of your tool. But again, there's so much good time savings here. I don't mind taking a couple of passes. And in fact, a lot of times what we will do is a repeat pass or a spring pass just to get a really good finish. Another quirk is that your speeds and fees are effectively all wrong. Unfortunately, the surface feet and the chip load are calculated on the 3 8 inch diameter section of the tool. And most of your cutting is being done with the smaller diameter leading edge of the tool. So we're going with what appears to be a higher surface footage of almost 500 surface feet per minute and a relatively low tooth owl feed per tooth. The multiple passes setting, which would be really helpful to have, unfortunately just doesn't work right now in bore when we have the chamfer mill type tooling. Not the end of the world. Again, it would be nice if it worked, but that's why we would duplicate the operation. And on our initial one, you can choose what sort of stock to leave settings you want, say two or three thou, if you wanted to come back for a lighter skim cut finish pass. Comparing the results with a surfacing toolpath is really night and day. Again, we're looking at eight seconds or 13 seconds for the chamfer tool. The third hole, it was a minute and 37 seconds, but that left pronounced scallop lines that you can really feel with your fingernail. That was using a pitch of eight thousandths of an inch Reducing that down to a pitch of three thousandths of, of an inch left a really good surface finish, but again, at the expense of time. You could improve this using a larger radius on the bull nose or switching to a larger diameter tool. But one of the reasons we wanted to make this video was you don't always have all of these different diameter or different radii, bull nose end mills in your toolbox, and they can be pretty expensive to buy for a project specific task, which is what makes it so awesome that we could machine even huge bores with a relatively small diameter tool. You can also use the 3D ramp tool path. And here's where that may be helpful. If you take a look back at the original bore tool path, it's one continuous downward spiral. 
That means the tip of the tool is always going to be the leading edge into the cut. That may not work well with certain materials or a delicate tip tool. Ramp tool path is a similar end result, but what it does is it's going to ramp down each Z level, do a finish pass at that Z level, and then it offers you a lead in move or a linking move at each Z level to roll into that material. One other thing to be aware of is you need a quality end mill that's cut at the accurate angle to do this. If your tool is not exactly 90 degrees or 82 degrees, it's going to leave more pronounced step over lines. If you have anything like a tool presetter or a optical comparator as a way to measure it, that can really help. Otherwise, you would have to rely on just some testing if you do get small uh, whispers type step over lines. As always, folks, though, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.